Yeah, it's not excessive, though. That's what anybody that needs to know that's not familiar with the legal system. It's not excessive. Um, it's excessive if you're Caucasian. It's not excessive if you're, you're black or brown. Um, every day, uh, over-sentencing is an issue. So now, again, I keep going back, now being somebody that had to take the time and learn and try to fight for his own freedom, I can go back and I can look at all these cases similar to mine. And I can see the, the disparity in sentencing and I can look at the people and the faces attached to it. And um, he said, all right, he said, I'm going to tell him you want to be home before you're 40. And uh, I went into the courtroom. Only one that was there was my mother, you know, as always. Um, and they ended up giving me 19 years. Well, 144 years all suspended but 19 at 19. Wow. So they ended up giving you 144 years, all suspended, 19 years. You're not going to get out until you're, I th I th from my understanding, to your 38, 40? 38. If, well, you spoke in Commonwealth of Virginia, if with good behavior, you do 85% of that. But with that amount of time, nobody does 85% of the time. You're going to get into a scuffle or something. And you've never been, you said you were never in trouble. So no previous arrests. Never. I had a, uh, I had a ticket when I was like 14 for possession of tobacco by a minor or something like that, like a $75 ticket, but never, no real trouble, nothing. So, so do you think that there was other motivations within the court? Was this a high profile case or was there, do you think they were just basically doing what the court system does? They look at a person, they see the charge, or do you believe that they looked at you, saw the charge? Or yeah. What, 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 what do you think was behind this? Because that's, Common. It, it sounds excessive, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure about the entire court process with that. Yeah. It's not excessive though. That's what anybody that needs to know that's not familiar with the legal system. It's not excessive. Um, it's excessive if you're Caucasian. It's not excessive if you're, you're black or brown. Um, every day uh, over sentencing is an issue. So now, again, I keep going back. Now being somebody that had to take the time and learn and try to fight for his own freedom, I can go back and I can look at all these cases similar to mine. And I can see the, the disparity in sentencing and I can look at the people and the faces attached to it. And then, you know, we, we can have a discussion about uh, prison labor, you know, mass incarceration, uh, modern day genocide. We, we can we can go into all these things because they're true. You know, prison is big business. So if I can put a black or brown man that's 19 or 20 in there, it's a good chance he's going to keep coming back his whole life, even if I give him one chance to come out. So. Why not? So, so you, you get your charge. You, you, I'm guessing, do you have an opportunity to kiss your family goodbye? No, 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 no. no. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I, I seen my mother after I got sentenced with my time, I seen her at visitation through a piece of glass. And I remember I had tears in my eyes and I was just telling her, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going in as a man and I'm coming out as a man. And I didn't even know what that meant. I was just scared. I was trying to hype myself up because I knew I was getting ready to go to prison. And prison was a lot different in jail. So what effects did you think uh, the situation had on your family? Oh, man. Um, immediately what sticks out to me is probably the embarrassment, you know, my mother faced uh, because we worked together, you know, and as much as I would, like I said, I was good at being on both sides. So I was still, I was friendly with her coworker, you know, I was, I was somebody who was present and then I disappeared. And she had to explain that. Um, I lost my grandmother and my uncle, you know, while I was incarcerated. So, you know, that was an impact not being able to have closure on certain circumstances. Um, I've got family members, you know, I've got a sister I don't talk to. Not because we have any negative feelings towards each other, but it's so strained that maybe once a year during around the holidays we you know we send each other love and that's it you know it's and, and this so is an older sister or a younger sister uh this is an older sister yeah okay yeah how did your uh, older sister take it 
Um, well, I got two older sisters. One of my older sisters, she's she texts me 26 times a day. Um, you know what I'm saying? She's there, you know. And what's weird is the sister that I was closer to, that's the one that I'm farther apart from now. So I could only assume without really having a conversation with her and just maturing and really taking into consideration everybody's feelings, I probably hurt her bad, you know, I, because I was somebody I used to be at her house on the weekends and, you know, I was all, that was, that was, I was a little brother. So, and then I disappeared, you know, I kind of abandoned you. Understood. I, man, I, I, I totally understand that. So you go into the prison system and now you're a 19 year old. What is the first couple, couple of days or weeks like for you? Are you transferred from, I guess, a county? I'm guessing you're in still in a county and then you have to get transferred to a, a larger facility. Yeah. Uh, so I was in county and I kind of made my way in county, as they say. Um, and I was able to, you know, get a good job, quote unquote, serving the trades. Uh, you know, I had I was able to move into jail. But here comes prison. Uh, I got sent. <laughs> I remember so. I want to break this down. So you go from jail to basically receiving. I don't, they might call it different things in other states, but receiving is basically like uh, intake. And that's where they classify you. You stay there for maybe two weeks. They classify you and then they send you to the you know the actual prison you'll be housed at. And I remember the point of re of going through intake where they called all of us, you know, into the bullpen, so to say. And one by one, they started to tell guys, all right, you're level one which is a low level. That's the, the lowest. It's a country club. All right, you're level two. You're level one. Level three, the guy's like, oh, crap. I'm a level three, level two. And then they get to me, like, you're level four. And from what, as soon as they said this, this is no exaggeration. I think people think I'm making this up. When they said that, the guys in the bullpen started, and these other guys going to prison, they started to separate themselves like physically start to separate themselves and i'm sitting there and i'm like i'm about to go to hell like i'm, I'm about to i'm about to have to endure hell on earth and I, I ended up getting sent to a place called uh sussex 2 state prison which they also called saigon at the time and man it, it was it was hell on earth so you get you get separated you're on your way there uh did you have any problems going in? So, I built. I built let, me, little... let me better ask this. What was your plan of action in, in jail? Did you have a plan of action? In jail, I used my charisma. I used my intelligence. I started to help guys with their paperwork. A lot of guys, the education level isn't the highest that, you know, that are incarcerated. And that's not a knock. It's just a truth. Um, so I would just help guys with paperwork, requests, stuff that they needed. Um, and I built these these bonds and guys started to follow me. And it got me in a little trouble in jail. But at the same time, it was what it was. You know, I, I go to the hole sometimes because the guys that I hung out with would get to fighting and they blame me. Or, but it was OK because it was a jail. But when I got to prison, those guys don't care about what you had. At the, they don't care about your reputation at the jail. They don't care about who you were in the streets. And then I'm from Chicago. And they know that. They when I talk, when I move, I'm not from Virginia. So I have no allies. And I'm on this level four maximum security prison where it goes down at. Guys are getting, you know, stabbed, beat. My plan of action was just to survive, you know, at, at that moment in time. It was just trying to figure out how to get through. The first two days, three days, four days, so I could get my foot, you know, get my foot in. But man, um, you know, the brothers that know me now, they say I made it look good, but I was scared. 